Starbucks has hired former CIA collection management officer and intelligence analyst at Pinkerton, Amanda Stanfill, as its manager of global intelligence for retail operations. All those jobs sound made up. This comes as Starbucks management struggles to handle a massive nationwide unionization push from workers who say they're underpaid and mistreated. Katie, I wonder how Stanfield feels about Starbucks Workers United, and I think you have some thoughts on this. Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to make sure everyone knows about Pinkerton. Mm -hmm. So they were founded in 1850 as basically a detective agency, and they're somewhat notorious, as they should be, for spying on workers, um, being acting as goons, being strike breakers, even actually participating in, in things that are considered massacres. But uh, so now everyone knows who Pinkerton's is. And then the CIA, you obviously know the CIA is. <laughs> but like, you kind of can't make this up. I mean, like, I don't know what's more pathetic, that Starbucks has to hire CIA to like smash baristas, or yeah. that an ex-CIA has nothing better to do with her time than to smash baristas. And yeah, but they have a lot of money to pay the ex-CIA. That is true. Official. That is true, yeah. And like, Howard Schultz is worth $40 billion, and he's calling in the CIA it's not to enough. stop unionization. Like, he should call in the guys who went after, like, Bin Laden next. Well, so what's Starbucks' explanation for this hire? I don't actually know if they have an explanation yeah. for it. I don't think they really were trying to advertise the fact that they went uh, CIA uh, Pinkerton. But, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And what they're doing is, of course, they're trying to uh, wokeify their anti-union efforts, as yes. is so on brand for them. They actually have a, a website called OneStarbucks.com. We are One Starbucks, where they're basically trying to dissuade people from joining unions. And they actually like define what a union is. And they say, it's a biz unions are a business, just like Starbucks. Only unions make their money from member dudes instead of great coffee. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Is there is there some truth to that from my perspective? Yeah, unions like major big unions, but if you're conflating independent unions with right. the major big unions, like so, for instance, the Amazon union founded right. by Chris Charles, sure. basically, yeah. it's not affiliated with any big labor organizations, and that's arguably the future of unions right. anyway. Yeah, and they make it seem like they're not going to be able to, you know, talk with management because of these unions, and and with unions, let's see, what do they say? They work side by side. Yeah, so we can work together side by side. Yeah. Or we can work with you through a third party across a negotiating table. Side by side, we can hear your voice directly from you. Total false dichotomy. Uh, yeah, total yeah. false dichotomy. And why do you think they need unions in the first place? Because right. they can't work side by side with them because Schultz is making is worth forty billion dollars and yeah. his workers have no leverage basically. And that's the whole point of a, a labor unions, the power of numbers. And I think that you and I can both make critiques of a lot of uh, organized labor becoming, big labor. yeah, big yeah. labor, sure. But even there, you know, in theory, what they are spending their money on is advocating for workers. In theory, right. Yeah. And yeah. then, as you said, with the rise of a lot of independent labor, and this is the future, it's only, only going to go that way more. I mean, this is just, again, it's the wokeification of uh, exploitation and the wokeification of union busting. It's so interesting because every time we talk about the Starbucks union on this program, I think about, like, first of all, Starbucks, Starbucks workers are, they are generally, like, Starbucks has tried to placate their workers over the years with pretty decent benefits, right. in many cases, pretty decent starting salaries. And it's one of these really interesting new eras of unionization. You see it also at Amazon. When you're getting beyond the sort of compensation and benefits into yeah. the way people, obviously this comes, this is not new to unionization drives, but the way people are treated, and now in more high-tech environments, sure, right? The right. way that they're commodified um, in things that make people really uncomfortable. So for instance, when Howard Schultz tried to wokeify Starbucks originally, right. he had the open bathroom policy, right? And that meant baristas, as a Jacobin article reported, were being asked to work as, quote, untrained social workers in ways they felt were dangerous. Mm. And of course, obviously they were. And so I can see Starbucks, you know, justifying a CIA hire as yeah. being like, listen, this is worker security. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and I'm sorry, I think I may have said 40 billion before, it's 4 billion, mm -hmm. poor guy. Uh, Howard Schultz, but he obviously has, be he never, I know, we should organize for you that. Get more Let's organize uh, union for that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like the guy never has to work a day in his own life, in his life, like let them unionize. I'm, I'm waiting for people to argue that it's like, you know, t Starbucks is too essential, you know, like United Steel, we can't do this. You know, it's like they're making lattes, but I think it would probably, I would feel less guilty. I would probably go there more. I'd feel less guilty knowing that my overpriced latte was at least helping, uh, 
pay workers a, a livable wage and, and give them benefits. But um, I do think it's kind of funny that he's basically coming out of retirement to stop like kids from earning a better, uh, better wage. And um, again, it's like he should maybe they can hire some Navy SEALs or something to, to do it next. But it is it's just ridiculous. And uh, yeah. I think that it's embarrassing. He should uh, read Ken Klippenstein's story that we talked about on the show, and he should get the list of, of terror threats. Yes. Just stop selling Starbucks to Trump supporters, um, to people who are you know egregious on the left. Right. Just oh, stop. I see. I... Keep them out. Only let the wine moms in. Yeah, and CIA. It'd be great for their business. But I was actually going to say the opposite, which is that Schultz should, should just put all of the... Uh, organizers and all the workers unhappy with their situation trying to organize, he should put them on that terror list. <laughs> You're right. Well, are they not already? Yeah, they should be. I'm they sure might they already, already. are. Yeah. This, is a, this is a question for Ken. Yeah, I've got to get Ken back on. We'll invite him for coffee. <laughs> oh, we should. <laughs> well, we'll get Ken a like venti mocha yeah. non-fat frappuccino. Very good. I know yeah. that's his favorite. Yeah. He, to he told us that. He just reads that comes across from him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he oozes. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It will be like the opening of uh, Zoolander. Mm. We'll all get in uh, Ken's convertible yeah. Jeep, I assume right. he has. But without the tragic ending. Well, we don't know. I we mean, don't know. Sometimes you need a cigarette. You do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Get it. Your coffee. This is the first time uh, Katie and I have co-hosted together, and I feel like we have a proclivity for just going absolutely off the rails. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Much like the men in the opening of uh, Zoolander. Yes. <laughs> it's just Mad Max in here uh, on Mad Rising Max Friday. Ben Stiller. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we'll have more Rising for you after this. <laughs> 